not afraid to let go Get aside if you ever Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're going to be looking at the top three young NBA stars that I think will have a huge impact on their team's performance in the bubble. Before I get into the top three, I want to give some honorable mentions. We got Ben Simmons, Shea Gilgis Alexander, Donovan Mitchell, and Zion. First up, Ben Simmons. I mean, you know who he is. He's a 6'10 point guard that can finish at the rim. Great at playmaking. Only problem is he can't shoot. Uh, he averaged almost 17 points per game, almost 8 boards, 8 assists, 58% from the field. He had effective field goal percentage of 58% too. I mean, you know what he brings. He brings great defense, great offense, but he can't shoot. That's fine. I mean, the Sixers were a little quirky this year with their offense after trading Jimmy Butler away and getting Josh Richardson and Al Horford. But if they could keep it up on the defensive end, then maybe they could do something. But I think it really depends on Ben Simmons playing well along with Joel Embiid. All right, over to OKC. We got Shea Gildas Alexander. OKC outperformed by a lot this year, mostly due to Chris Paul playing well and Shea Gildas Alexander. Before the season started, they were set to win 32 and a half games and they ended the season 40 and 24 and that's uh missing out on about 20 games there so they really outperformed in his second year he averaged 19 points six boards three assists on 47 percent field goal percentage and 35 from three he's not the quickest player out there on offense but he's smooth with the ball and it works he has a really long wingspan that helps him on defense and i expect to see great things from him in the future on to the Jazz, we got Donovan Mitchell. This year he averaged 24 points, 4 boards, 4 assists, shooting 45 from the field, 36 from 3, and a 51% effective field goal percentage, which is decent. You know, in his first two years, he was good, but he definitely struggled from the field a little bit, taking some weird floaters and mid-rangers. He caught back on them a little bit, but I think there's still another level of Donovan Mitchell that we haven't seen yet. I think that final form is still there, and there's a few more years until we get there, but if he plays well, Rudy Gobert plays well, then maybe they could do some. They're the four seed right now, so we'll see what happens. Lastly, for the honorable mentions, we got Zion. I mean, I can't not mention Zion. He only played 19 games, but his impact was incredible. The Pelicans' offense was completely different. The connection between Lonzo and Zion was amazing. He was throwing lobs from almost full court to him, looking like some D. Wade, LeBron stuff. He averaged 23 and a half, almost six boards, two assists on almost 60% from the field. So, I mean, he definitely can ball. It's just a matter of longevity for him, I think, and proving that he could do it for a whole season. But right now, I think he just left the bubble for some family matter or something, and they were saying that he had cramps as well, so not really sure what's going on with him, but we'll see what happens to him if he comes back or not. On to my top three players. Number three, I got Ja Morant. Rookie. Coming in as a point guard for the Grizzlies, averaging 17 and a half, three and a half, seven assists, 49% from the field, 36, 37% from three. 52% effective field goal rating. I mean, this guy was amazing. Definitely one of the most consistent rookies we've seen in quite a while. He's lanky. He's quick. He's got long arms. It seemed like almost every week he was posterizing someone else. He really helped the Grizzlies just outperform what they were supposed to do. I mean, before the season started, they were set to win 27 and a half games, and they went 32 and 33, sitting at the 8 seed right now. They were set to win 27 and a half games, and they ended up winning 32 games, and the season and didn't even get to end so clearly John Morant had a huge impact on why the Grizzlies were so successful obviously he had other teammates around him that played well like Jaron Jackson Jr who was amazing great defensive guy can hit the three with consistency and I think those two are going to have a huge impact on how well this team does and who knows hopefully they'll stay at the eight seed and I'm expecting them to play the Lakers maybe they'll be able to take a game or two off but you know it's the Lakers so we'll see all right next up at number two we got Jason Tatum 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 had a good start to the year. He was playing well. Definitely had his best year so far. His points per game has risen from his rookie year in 2017, where he averaged 14 points. 2018, he went up to about 15, 16, and this year he's up to 23, 24, which is great. And the Celtics have a great team. They have three or four ball handlers that can really shoot off the dribble and make their own plays. In that second half of this season, Jason Tatum was just going off. He was averaging over 30 points per game. He was was hitting clutch shots in the fourth quarter the Celtics were on a great win streak for a while it just seems like when Jason Tatum plays well the Celtics are winning and yeah he could play good 
but I expect them to really step it up and bring it to that next level and really embrace the Mamba mentality, if you know what I mean. R.I.P. Kobe. All right, number one. Could have guessed it. We got Luka. I mean, this dude's incredible. Second year in the league, averaging 28, 29 points pretty much. Nine boards. Eight or nine assists, 46% from the field, about 32 from three, and a 53% effective field goal rating. I mean, what what can you say about Luca? The dude's the dude's a walking bucket. He's not too athletic, but he's breaking ankles, hitting step backs. He's making plays for everyone on his team. He's okay on the defensive end. I mean, his feet aren't too slow, but I guess he's an average defender, I'd say. He definitely has a little room to grow, but I mean, this dude was what like top five in MVP voting and his second year he's incredible the mavericks are sitting at the seventh seed right now but they're definitely not going to drop to eight they're seven games ahead of the grizzlies they're only a few games behind the jazz and the thunder so who knows who they'll they'll play right now they'd be matched up against the clippers but i don't know they could play the Nuggets if they move up to six and the Nuggets stay at three. I think that would be better for them anyways. If Luka goes crazy and Porzingis is playing really well, as well as the role players they have around them, then the Mavericks have a really good chance of upsetting some teams. All right, that's going to be it. Just want to thank you for watching. Please, please, please leave your opinions down in the comments below. I'll definitely get back to you. Um, if you like what you hear, subscribe for more. I'm going to be trying to make a video or two every week and put those out for you. Go follow me on Twitter. I'll be tweeting a lot about basketball. Putting some video ideas up on there. I'll see you guys in the next one.